Hey, thanks for joining me. Wild Storm Rising, Chapter 1. So I've been doing um, Jim Lee's Wildcats, and I have not been very subtle about the fact that artistically it was good, although it's not my far, it's far from my favorite Jim Lee work. But the characters, the, the, just the way the stories were being told were not particularly interesting as... I remember as a kid reading them, I, I was kind of fooling myself into enjoying it. It took me a long time to really realize, like, I'm not really digging this. It's just, it's not working. I think the characters, I mean, honestly, any character, all these image comic characters is just as, as far as a, a design and a look hold all kinds of possibilities. But the stories just in their first iterations did not really ever connect with me and ever take off. But, um... I do remember when Wildstorm got to this Wildstorm Rising storyline. I I honestly can't remember exactly what was going on or what the ultimate point of it was. And I haven't bothered rereading this because I don't have all the other chapters and I'm not really particularly interested, honestly, in reading one chapter of some massive little storyline that goes on in all kinds of other books of which I do have some, but not all, and ultimately I don't care. So why are we looking at this? Well, if you're an artist and a long time comic fan, just looking at this, you should recognize who, who's do, doing the art. Barry Windsor Smith. I recently did the uh, Weapon X book, at least the one, the uh, last chapter that Barry Windsor Smith did, and talk talking about how good his art was. He's got such a weird, odd vibe. I honestly didn't get it for the longest time. And his work is still kind of hit and miss for me, if I'm being honest. But I think what misses for me is when he does work that it seems to me he clearly is not really emotionally invested in. Where he's, it, maybe it's just a paycheck. There's some books from Valiant Comics that I, I would just look through and I'm like, this is boring. I don't like it at all. And then you see the Weapon X stuff, and you're like, this is amazing. And I've seen some videos where people review some of his other books, some of his art books, um, some of his black and white stuff. And his skill level is just unbelievable. <coughs> Excuse me. But again, it's more about when it, it seems like, I mean, I, this is just pure conjecture on my part, but when he's actually interested in the work. So where does this book fall? I would think him doing a Wildcats book, a, a you know, a Wildstorm Studios book, he probably wouldn't care, I would think. But somehow the art in this thing is actually pretty fucking fantastic, which shouldn't be a shock considering who the artist is. But like I said, he's done some stuff that's pretty boring. So, you know, it he can miss the mark, honestly. One of the more interesting things that we flip open to the back here. So story is by James Robinson, who, who I've read some things by him and I, I've kind of liked everything I've, I've read from him and Barry Windsor Smith. He helped write the story. The art says art by Windsor Smith studio. So drawing Barry Windsor Smith and then inks by two different people and Alex Biley, B-I-A-L-Y, he does pages like 2, 3, 6, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 18, 20. So it's kind of like they just kind of skipped every other page or something. And then the other guy, John Floyd. So I've, as far as I've ever known, I always thought that Barry Windsor Smith inked his own stuff. I mean, I know he can, I know he does, but you got other people inking him. So how's that going to look? And then colors, it says by Eric Hope and Barry Windsor Smith. So He's also contributing to the colors. I'm I'm kind of curious as to what the division of labor in there is. What does he do? What does this Eric Hope do? Does Barry Windsor Smith direct the color, like do color guides and hand it off to Eric Hope, and then he does the color separations on the computer? I don't know. All I know is that I was having flipped through this, the the, the art, I was really like... This felt like Barry Windsor Smith really doing as good as he can do. He's got a really weird style. When you're kind of used to the 
Jim Lee's and Mark Silvestri's, this more rounder, organic looking, odd shape, like he doesn't draw his, the hot female girls to look like hot female, you know, like they don't look like hot girls necessarily. They kind of look kind of goofy, kind of weird. And he's definitely got facial structures, long noses and the way he does mouths, you know, facial structures that definitely you're like, if you look at it, you're like, yeah, that's him. But there's something about his layouts and the figure drawing, the power behind everything and the coloring in this, Who, whoever was doing what, um, there's so much color in this and it works so well. Um, I'm going to reiterate, I did not read this. I don't care what the story is. I do not give a fuck. It's even if I had read it, I'm sure it's not that interesting. It's a bunch of Wildstorm characters banding together to fight somebody for something. Um, God, I wonder if I could remember all the characters. You got Maul, Warblade, Spartan, Voodoo, Grifter, Zealot. Those are easy. Um, Fuji? S uh, God. Uh, Winter, Fahrenheit, I think. Um, I'm assuming that's Jackson King. I can't remember him, and I know her name. Um, it's, it's like a like a singer's type name. Oh, it's driving me nuts. It's right there on the tip of my head, uh, at my tip of my tongue. Well, I'm sure we'll see it somewhere. Anyway, but look at this spread. Lots of figures, lots of chaos, lots of superheroes battling but lots of nice, vibrant color. And God, for some reason, it just stood out to me and I appreciate it. Instead of being like a bunch of drab grays or hard to read colors or shit printing like I've seen in several books where, you know, the original work looks fantastic, but the printing that they chose to use was absolute garbage. These Image Comics guys, I mean, they use this nice glossy paper and everything just prints so vibrantly and beautifully. And this is actually a lot later than I thought. This says printed in May of 95. So I was still in fucking high school. I was shocked that it's this old. I just didn't think this Wildstorm Rising was going on at this point. It's only a couple years into the Wildstorm book. So I'm kind of shocked. I thought this was way later, but what the hell do I know? Um, I like Grifter getting his ass blasted here. So yeah, Barry Windsor Smith kind of an acquired taste in some ways for some people, I would think. But for those who know, you just cannot deny his artistic skill. Another double page spread. It's really interesting to go from almost a splash page to start to double splash and another one. I mean, they're really hyping up the big battle. So it's Stormwatch fighting the Wildcats. So that's interesting. And again, I like what they're doing with the color. Spartans, laser blast going on back here, blowing away someone. Um, this guy, I like the coloring hitting Maul here. I just kind of wish they'd blow a hole through Maul and just be done with them. Um, they're saying a bunch of silly things like, you killed my brother, die, die, murderers, all of you, and he's getting shot. And what's her name here? Um, she's like, your struggle's futile, wildcats. That is a crazy shot. Look at this figure. Like, drawing this anatomically would be a big challenge. That is a hard angle to get. Props to him. Like, again, he kind of draws weird faces. And he's not exactly drawing these girls to look like sexy girls in the way Jim Lee or Sylvester would do. But it's, it's still really eye-catching. And again, vibrant color. So it's just like crazy down shot of both these teams just going at each other. And the cops are just standing around going, what in the fuck is going on? What kind of horrible nightmare are we witnessing? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to bring it up closer to the camera. But if you look at the coloring on this panel, it's like they have like the shadows of this chain link fence um, colored across the bodies of the people on the other side of it. That's a really interesting attention to detail. I love all the coloring going on in this panel. Like, 
it feels like a nighttime scene, but there's a bunch of lights, a bunch of fire, a bunch of energy projection. And so there's, again, just bright, vibrant colors everywhere. I don't know who douchebag in the trench coat and hat is, smoking, watching the fight. Pretty awesome shot of Zealot, Grifter, boring as fuck, Warblade. Not the drawing, just the character is boring. Oh, yeah. Also, when I found this, I, I went looking through some back issue bins, obviously. I mean, I found this brand new um, a couple of weeks ago, and it still has these cards in it. And so I saved them to open them up live on camera. I have no idea what's in here. So we're about to see. And watch, let me just ruin the value of this incredibly precious comic book by opening up the, the, the cards. Let's see, did I pop it open? I'm trying to open it without damaging the bullshit inside. What do I get? Ugh, burnout from Gen 13. Wow. Um, card art by John J. Muth, M-U-T-H. Um, huh. Never seen this artwork before. Burnout, who gives a shit as a character? I mean, they were all fun in Gen 13, but that is a kind of interesting piece of art. So that's neat. And there's also another one back here. So while we're at it, let's just, let's look at them both. I keep fantasizing like maybe I'll find that ultra rare something or other that they put in just a couple of books. The card everyone's looking for. Look for Wildstorm Gallery trading cards at your local comics and hobby stores. Uh -huh. A couple of decades too late for that. Ugh. Boring. Defile. Painted by Chiodo. That's pretty good. I mean, the character's boring and stupid, but the painting there is pretty badass. Well, a couple of boring characters, but, I mean, beggars can't be choosers. Anyway, so now how do I, now how do I get these things out of here? Without ripping my comic apart. Ah, fuck it. Um, anyway... The teams are just still fighting and blasting each other. Awesome coloring going on still. Another giant splash page. Yeah, I wonder if, you know, part of the reason that Barry Windsor Smith was, it, from what it looks like to me, giving his all, I mean, they had to pay him really fucking well. I have to imagine this is a big payday for him. And respect to him for like, all right, I'll, I'll do the best I can. And I have to say, having other people ink his work He's got such an organic line to his pencils and his own inks when you see him. I'm actually kind of shocked. If I, you were to just put this in front of me, I would just assume he did it himself. But it listed all those other people doing the ink. So whoever he had doing it, really, it looks to me like they really tried to stay faithful to the very unique pencil line that Barry Windsor Smith puts down. So credit to them. I'm still looking for the name of that. Uh, that bitch from Stormwatch that screams. Oh my God. I can't, I, wait, I can't believe, I can't think of it. It's driving me nuts. Um, it's like Fahrenheit there is kicking Grifter right in the face. It'd be fun if he was kicking him straight in the nuts. Let's see. More just crazy use of color. Just really neat. That's a very organic looking Spartan there with some wild looking hair. It's just these two teams just trying to fucking murder each other. 
And there's not any like text boxes really explaining. Well, there are. I'm sorry. I take that back. Not on every page. I mean, they get some in here to explain some of the story. But it's just super teams fight. Just blow each other up in this little square block of the city. Looks like Warbly got his arm blown off. Good for him. Um, great shot of just like ordinary citizens in the city watching these superhumans just slaughter each other. So did someone get blasted into the sky or something? I don't know if that's Warblade there. And then he's coming down. I guess it is Warblade. Just like this flaming carcass of this body just flying down and slams into the wall, blows away by everybody. That's really funny. Um, there's this character. I think he was introduced. Wasn't he the guy that was introduced in the uh, Claremont issues of Wildcats? It kind of looked like Claremont. I could be just totally misremembering who this guy is. Kind of don't care. They're trying to make a very serious story. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Void showed up. And I guess she was gone. It says Void is back and what? And woe and warning come with her. Wow. <laughs> um, they say, along with a subtle change to her appearance. So basically, they're saying that she's huge. Not like massively huge, but I mean, look at the size of, like, look how big she is standing here compared to all these other humans. And then she's carrying away war blades, like burned ass, like destroyed body. She's huge. He's like, Void, you've grown. She says, I know. I don't, I don't know. Because he asked how. She says, perhaps it's that my powers govern me as much as I govern my powers. I needed to be big now, and so in teleporting, I became big. This is no conscious transformation of mine, but indeed, I certainly, I do certainly need size now. So that's interesting. It's an interesting kind of spin on her powers. Interesting lighting. And again, I love the color. Look how vibrant those colors are. I wouldn't think that I would like this, but I actually really, really do. I think Warblade looks great there. The creepy look on her face, his limp body, and the shiny look on her, like, silver figure. And then another, like, how many splash pages are in this book? I, I, I don't know. I wonder if uh, Windsor Smith was just having a great time. Great drawing, and then this awesome figure, a fantastic coloring again, and this scene of destruction. So weird. I have no idea what this story was about. I, I, like I said, I've read some of it and I just, and none of it stuck. I mean, I could tell you everything that happened in the Wildcats miniseries and the first couple issues by Jim Lee because I was just like pouring over those books forever. But as time went on, you're like, all right, I just don't care. It's more about, uh, is the art awesome? And I'll just enjoy that because the stories were not keeping me there. Um, that is another great figure. Nice inking going on. Crazy awesome face. And then the use of color and ink work to give it this shiny texture that she has. Void was always kind of boring. They did all kinds of things that they could come up with to make her interesting. That's a good shot right there. I like that. So I guess she's yelling to everybody to stop fighting. Um, voodoo's down. And I like this shot of them kind of looking at each other. Voodoo looks great. The fire kind of coming off Void's body. More great energy. That's a couple of good panels. Great face right there. God, is that... That's, um, that's Zealot. Lots of visceral energy, right? God, just every page is just, just really interesting drawing. Great figure work, great colors, great shadows. And then this boring ass villain. Is that, that asshole, this asshole, and the card we just looked at, Defile. I think so. Some bad guy with odd colored skin, ridiculous outfit, and horns for a helmet. Okay. I'm very, very scared of you. Looks 
Looks like Lord Imp picking up Warblade there. I oh, love these side shots right there. Those look awesome. And then just look at the scene of destruction. These two fucking idiot teams just fighting each other. Looks like Wildcats took off and left Stormwatch. Really neat stuff. And then this looks like a double page splash of all the Wildstorm characters. I see um, Deathblow, Union, Gen 13 guys, Wetworks, Defile, I guess, Backlash. This Halo building. That's a good shot of the Halo building. I always thought that was kind of an interesting design with a little circular design thing on the top for the halo building pretty neat and just figure drawing he didn't have to really do much backgrounds or anything except in this one panel so pretty fun great coloring going on very very vibrant and then to be continued in wildcats 20 which i know i've got i do have those I just missed this one. I mean, I can't honestly say that if I remember, if I would have seen this on the shelf back in 95, if I would have got it, I would think I would have, but I don't know. This cover seems very familiar. I'm, th I'm pretty sure I've got that. Wetworks number eight. Yeah, I'm sure I do. I was collecting Wetworks, just waiting for it to get as good as the promise of the concept was supposed to be and never was. Yeah, Ryan Benjamin, Wills Bertasio, great artists, both of them. Anyway, well, that's it. So, I mean, I was going to say for modern Barry Windsor Smith art, but this is fucking 95. It's just, it looks very modern with just this nice slick coloring because I've seen so little of his work. That's just, that's my fault. So much of the only stuff I've seen was old newsprint stuff in Marvel comics from back in the day and then boring Valiant comic stuff. So, and because it's new to me, I've only seen this just recently. I'm like, oh, this is new work from him three decades later. So anyway, um, yeah, sorry if you wanted to hear some like interesting kind of breakdown about the story of the Wildcats and Stormwatch and the Wildstorm Studios. I got nothing for you, but beautiful drawings, beautiful coloring. We'll look at that all day, and uh, I'll enjoy every minute of it. So that is all I've got. So I'm curious to think about or hear what you guys think about this. Uh, leave, leave some comments. Let me know. And um, that's all for now. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.